Welcome back. I'm excited for you to be joining me today. We're going to be making um, a DIY paint using everyday materials that you probably have at home. So let's get started. So we'll need a few ingredients today um, and a couple of different materials. You're going to need some type of mixing tools, um, a spoon, a spatula, um, one of these are great, um, baking soda, food coloring, a toothpick as a stirrer, some form of measuring tool, a measuring cup. This is actually from my Ninja, which will work fine. A bowl and an ice tray or some form of container where you can store the colors and paints that you make. All right, let's get started. So I have my baking soda and my measuring tool. It looks like I have about six ounces um, of baking soda. And I also have my water. I have about 12 ounces of water. I'm not going to use it all. But um, I want my ratio of water to baking soda to be about three parts baking soda to one part water. Um, and there are two ways that you can do it. You can either pour it individually um, into your container and fill it up about halfway. eyeball it and gauge how much water based on the thickness of your baking soda because if you ever added water or any type of liquid to baking soda it kind of thickens up and all right so you're gonna then pour into make sure you keep it nice and stirred so it's getting nice and even you're gonna then pour into your ice tray filling all the slots about half to three quarters the next step now remember I said I was gonna show you two different methods. So we have kind of like the dry mixture method. Um, now I'm gonna go through and kind of add colors. I'm gonna do the primary colors with the dry mixture. And I would say start with a few drops and kind of work your way up. and I already have a red stick so you can definitely reuse the um, toothpicks if they are similar or light colors but just be careful because a little goes a long way all right so that was five drops can you see
colors. So there is a green that's included with our um, with our food coloring set, but I want us to make our own. So three to four drops of yellow, and to make green, we need blue. We'll start with one drop of blue because blue is such a strong color. Oh, wow. Look at that. Look at that happening. Can you guys see? Oops. Look how deep that got with just one drop of blue. You can use your everyday kitchen pantry materials to create food color in the same way we did with the baking soda. For red, you can use something like a beet juice or um, pomegranate juice or beet powder, things that are going to be really, really potent um, and rich in color, even like a hibiscus. Um, for orange, we've got things. Think about when you look at a fruit, what color is it? That color can usually be recreated either by boiling um, the skins or boiling the actual item and using the juice from that or adding a powder. Um, for orange, you can use carrot juice, carrot powder, even paprika. Um, for yellow, turmeric is a really good one, um, even saffron. For green, anything like a chlorophyll or spinach. Um, some people have spinach powder, matcha powder. Um, blues can be derived from a red cabbage juice and purples can come from purple sweet potatoes or purple cakes. So those are just a few ways that you can make your own homemade food coloring. I don't have all of those things on stock, but I do have a few of them. Oh, I can't forget about brown coffee, duh. <laughs> So I'm going to show you um, just a few examples that I have and show you how to make some homemade food coloring so that you can still achieve the watercolor look that you're looking for. Let's get started. No food coloring, no problem. All right, so I'm going to go over kind of some of our set ingredients. The first thing you need is a hot cup of water, and that's to kind of pull the rich colors out of each of the products that we're going to be using. Um, I also have onion skins that have been boiled and again i'll set the links to the tutorials of those a tea bag 
blueberries. If anybody's ever had blueberries, then you definitely know how they automatically and instantly dye anything and everything. Paprika. Turmeric. And instant coffee. So these are just to name a few. Um, by no means are they every single product that you can use. And you can kind of play around and experiment with different products. Most of these colors are going to be on along more of the natural, um, warmer tones. Um, but they definitely are a way to get started. So remember, the pigmentation is completely up to you. It really only takes a teaspoon or so to kind of get what you're looking for. also stain like clothes and paper so we already know that it has staying power and definitely staining power okay so that's my coffee then I've got my blueberries I'm just gonna kind of press them in a little bit wow look at this look at that purple which turmeric is so potent, similar to curry. Wow, oh, look, instantly a nice strong yellow. So if look at the difference, right? All right, let's test some of these out. All right, look at our spread. We have coffee um, with our portion of water in the first container. Then we have red onion skins that were boiled for about 30 minutes and then sat for about um, 30 to 45 minutes. I also have black tea. So just um, warmed up some tea in a, a cup with half halfway full of water and then let the tea bag sit for about 30 minutes. I have blueberries paprika, turmeric, and then number seven is kind of a blend. It's a mix of turmeric and paprika. So I have a different Q-tip in each and that's just so that I can keep my colors separate. But of course, when you're painting or drawing or designing, it's completely up to you how you um, mix or use your Q-tips. I suggest or recommend using a Q-tip for each. Wow, look how bold that coffee is. So my red onion skins, I only use one onion, so maybe, I definitely see the pigmentation, but maybe consider um, holding or keeping onions over a period of time. I'm an onion lover, so that definitely is a possibility. The tea as well is a little lighter than I anticipated, but it looks like you can actually layer the color up for richness. Nice blueberries again i left the actual some people might boil the blueberries i just microwaved mine for a minute or two and um, i left the actual blueberries in there so it could continue to kind of pick up pigment and wow look how look how bold that is paprika a little seasoning nice the paprika actually was a little a lot more pigmented than i expected um, the color of the water is actually very light, but surprisingly, the paprika picked up really well. Turmeric. I definitely overdid it with the turmeric. My turmeric is kind of thick. But look at that color. And last but not least, our turmeric paprika. Ooh. 
I'm loving what I'm seeing with the turmeric and the mix of paprika. I think because turmeric is such a rich color naturally, um, blending it with that paprika is kind of giving the base of this color a little more richness, which when the paprika is just by itself, you can tell that it's not as rich, but definitely blends with the turmeric, brings out that orange, which is great. So I have a lot of neutrals here with a little bit of kind of like this blue purple, but I love the tonations. I mean, you can definitely do a nice piece of artwork with all of these. <laughs> and I would suggest kind of either um, placing a top on them to preserve the color individually um, or putting them in the ice tray is probably a good method to have them all in one space. Um, I haven't tried it with the baking soda. The baking soda is going to, because these colors are natural, they're from natural products, they're not going to be as potent like the food coloring. And because baking soda is naturally white, it's going to then act as a mixer with all of these colors. And so I don't necessarily recommend if you were to um, be painting with watercolor or trying to do a piece of artwork to be using the baking soda um, for the natural colors. So let's see what I can kind of create. I would absolutely and totally recommend if you don't have food coloring no problem you can create a small piece of artwork just using um, everyday materials we talked about the coffee seems to be the strongest um, and the most vi vibrant or potent um, substance and then also I think turmeric definitely comes in runner-up along with blueberries for really pigment um, pigmentation really good pigmentation so thank you for joining me today. I hope you try out some of our DIY paint to, um, tutorials at home. And I look forward to you tuning in next time. Bye-bye.